Uh, okay, let's get started again. All right, next topic, marketing. Marketing and growth, right? What is marketing? What is marketing? What is marketing definition? It depends on books, depends on professors, depends on marketers, depends on people, right? So many definitions. Don't need to memorize it, okay? It is a definition of American Marketing Association. It is a definition by uh, Philip Kotola and Kevin Dan Keller. He was a Dartmouth tax uh, professor and the Kellogg professor, Kotolais. And this is a definition by Peter Drucker. But don't need to memorize it. I want to say these things to you, marketing, about marketing. Marketing is not about making decent plans, marketing plans. Not about making plans, but for action, implementation, execution. And marketing is not about making hype or buzz or boom, right? Marketing is market plus ING, is addressing market and is comprehensive activities to make the business growth, right? Innovation is innovative idea plus growth, right? Sourcing fukyu. It should be fukyu, ne? It should be spread it out. Innovative idea should be spread it out for becoming innovation. So in order to spread your innovative idea, you have to make the business growth. That is marketing activities. And as Ishibashi-san said, for getting business growth, you have to get other team members onto your ship, right? Then the teams will be getting bigger and bigger, should be bigger than before, for getting business growth, right? And the question is, where is your market? Where is your market? Once you start communicating to outside stakeholders, I promise you will get a couple of typical questions from stakeholders. Where is your market? Where is your primary market or secondary market? Or how big is your market? Is your business scalable, right? I got a bunch of these kind of questions, and you will. And you cannot target at all over the world. You cannot from the beginning because you are a small startup at the first point. You, can, you might be able to do it later on, but you cannot say this from the beginning. You can say that within the company, right? Like a son Masayoshi san, eh? he did, he was doing it, right? I was to the of the and I the I was going to the of the and I was going to the of the and I was going to the and so you have to define your primary market first and get monopoly on the market and spread it to others. So first, you have to define your what is your primary market. Then the next exercise is market sizing. How many of you guys have done before market sizing activity? Okay, 20% or 30%, all right? Okay, here's an instruction. Estimate the market size you are primarily targeting at. So based on that value proposition, an accurate estimation is impossible. It's impossible. So use Fermi estimate, Fermi estimate. 
that, uh, if anyone have no idea about the Helmi SME, okay, uh, I'm gonna uh, explain later. Well, money-wise sizing is preferable, but operation-wise sizing, market sizing is okay too. In sometimes the market sizing based on money is quite hard, as Ichiba-san mentioned as an example. Uh, in those cases, you can use population-wise, number of people-wise sizing, market sizing. And write down your estimation process, including all the hypothetical numbers so that you can update them later on, right? So write down your logic onto your whiteboard paper. And once you finished market sizing for primary market, do it for secondary market too, if you have time, right? Don't target at all over the world. Be realistic. And this is uh, s uh, the most famous sample of Fermi estimate. This is, uh, the name is coming from uh, Enrico Fermi, uh, Chicago-based Italian physicist. The question is how many piano tuners in Chicago? And you don't have any clue. So you can calculate the number by using these, these type of hypothetical numbers. Uh, you estimate Chicago population as three million and person number of persons per household is three. So you multiply, uh, no, no, you divide three million by three and get one million household in Chicago. And percent of piano owners, you estimate 10% and uh, you multiply 10% by 1 million household and got the 100,000 pianos in Chicago and number of piano tuning per year per piano. I don't know, but I estimate it once a year and you multiply one. And number of piano tuning per day per tuner, three, maybe, I don't know and working days per year per tuner, estimated 250 days per year per tuner, then divide 100,000 times by three times 250. And you came up with 130 percent. That's a uh, sample of logic of Fermi estimate. It's kind of best effort by using your knowledge or experience, right? So, so yeah, did you get it? So this is, uh, your view basically building up the logic. So you're trying to get guess the number, but you want to give a intelligent guess, right? Not like, hmm, mm, 100 people, no. <laughs> you, you, you start from where you know, wherever the number you know. Okay, Chicago population, I don't know, but I can look it up later mindset, okay? I can probably look it up later, but I would say that's a three million. I heard maybe that number. Okay, from there, how can I get to the peop the number of piano um, piano guy or a tuner, right? Piano so, guy. <laughs> piano guy. Yeah, Billy Joel. Hi. So, you know, so that's a step-by-step -step, um, variables, and then you, you are guessing step-by-step. -step. And you, you uh, every number, you go, I can look it up later numbers, okay? Get it? So this is called Fermi um, estimate. Like you can estimate the number of denshin bashira in Japan. The the electric electricity pole. You can estimate the number. Do you know how? You can look around and say how many poles do you see within one I don't know hundred square meters. And you know that Japan has certain square meters, so you can divide that into and you get the number. Your rough estimate, okay? It's like, yeah, so you, you guess with the best estimate. Okay? All right. Okay, yeah. okay. okay so uh, work on your market, get the market sizing uh, as your best guess, and show us very attractive numbers.
Right? Not not quite uh, necessary to be too too big. Okay, don't be necessary too big. All right. Okay. Uh, uh, take twenty minutes first. All right. Let's get start. We'll come and help you. We will come and help you to build the estimate, but try to build it up on by yourselves. So let me let me clarify one thing. You can you can do money like how much you can earn or if you don't know that you can just count the number of customers you might get. Okay? If you don't know the money, you can count the number of customers. Or maybe, but be careful. Customers per year, customers per month, it depends on your service, right? So try to find that out. Try to find that out. Customer per day, week, hour, you can do whatever you want. That's suitable for your market. Okay? Go. Yeah. 
Check it up the answer so
Okay, five more minutes. You have five more minutes. Okay, one more minute, and I think you guys need more time. Okay, I'll give you five more minutes. Yeah, five more minutes. Thank you. 
One minute, one minute to go. Could you get uh, very concrete, attractive numbers? Who has number? Who has uh, who has numbers? At least, maybe at, your answer. At least. At least, who has it? Wow, great. Good, okay. good. Okay, most of you had to. Good. Then the we're gonna ask two teams, right? Yes. All right. So it's gonna be interesting because we, since you, this team and this team both working on the plates, right? No, this and this. This and that team. Okay. That team. Okay. We want to know how logics are different. Yeah, yeah. Okay, so we will ask you two, how are you building your logic? Who wants to go first? Okay. Okay. Sarita is going first. So pay attention. Ha look the carefully. Look how they are different. Uh, because our target is only female and especially 20s and 30s and also who are concerned about her body shape and also she prefer uh, eating less than exercising so we think about first Japan population female and generation 20s to 30s and don't like exercise and concern body shape then so about Japanese population is this <laughs> and <laughs> female is half and generation roughly 30 percent and then don't like exercise mm, among our feeling 70 percent of my girlfriend doesn't like <laughs> exercise so uh, 0 0.7 and then 90 percent of girls concerned about her body shape so really okay. <laughs> Our estimation. Thank you. One, one, three, four. Oh, 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 oh. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Uh, is that number? Uh, the population? Number of population. Population, okay. Uh, to persuade them to buy our healthy dish. Yes. Okay. Right. And what about the right hand side? Yeah. What's the calculation on the right hand side? Is that uh, calculating um, the money wise? Or? Yeah, we're trying to calculate money wise, mm -hmm. and we were thinking about if if we can persuade uh, one person well, per mm. hundred girls. So one percent. One percent of that girl. Of that market to buy our dish, and uh, at the um a, a thousand yen yes. per dish. Yes. And that will be a hundred and twenty six million. Yen. Yen will be our income. <laughs> <laughs> yes. We think, of, uh, we think of changing the target to sometimes restaurant or hotels. Mm, so we think back again to the target. Okay. Okay. That's all. Yeah. That is uh, not the size of market, total market, right? 1% one one is uh, uh, ah, this one. share, market share. You, you 
might be uh, able to get, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, okay. All right, the total market is 100 times of that uh, number, yeah, right? Yeah. Okay. Okay. Cool, okay. right? Interesting. <laughs> Interesting. Mm -hmm. So, okay, all right. Okay, let's, let's hear from this team. Okay, thank you. <laughs> let's see how they're different. Mm. Okay, yeah. Uh, <laughs> Uh, we est estimated the potential user of our uh, uh, our new place, or uh, how do you say it? <laughs> our new Donburi. Uh, <laughs> Donburi? <laughs> <laughs> we estimate the potential <laughs> user uh, who <laughs> may buy our product. Uh, first, we uh, we have uh, you know, this. Uh, this represents the whole Japan. Uh, we target the uh, market in Japan. Here is the whole Japan's population. <laughs> uh, this is uh, uh, 120 million people. And then we divide here. Uh, here is the age from zero, zero years old to 20 years old. And here is 20 years old to 60 years old. And this, this target is 60 years old to, to 80 uh, years old. And we estimate that uh, this is a uh, twenty percent of whole Japan's uh, population. Here is uh, sixty percent of whole Japan's <coughs> population, and here is twenty percent. So uh, we estimate that uh, the people uh, in uh, teen people is a uh, ten uh, percent of whole population. Uh, uh, people in twenties is a uh, fifteen percent of whole population, or uh, like uh, the same in the whole uh, ages. And uh, we divide male and female uh, in the, uh, ho the same ratio in Japan. So uh, here is 5% of whole Japan's population. Here is 5% of whole Japan's population. Here is 7.5% uh, <laughs> of whole Japan's population and uh, the same. And then we estimate that uh, in each, each segment uh, mm -hmm. how how uh, how many how much percent of users may interested in our product? Uh, we estimated that twenty percent of the female two percent uh, two percent of female girls are interested in our product, and uh, in this segment. Uh, your logic <laughs> 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 but <laughs> interesting <laughs> but interesting because the, the approach is completely different okay gender these two demographic and then they saw they def, you know they gave a different goal setting or a share settings okay of whole population so that's that's their logic okay and then comment to that is that okay why is it five percent why is it four percent so there's a whole logic jump okay okay I understood I can I can imagine why you divided them mm. okay it's a demographic but why 5% of teenage girls will buy this? There is no logic. So it's just a, it's not estimate, it's just a guess. Okay. So, you know, there you need a little bit of a logic build up there, okay? And for, 
for your case, yes, you, you build up your logic okay, but that's a market, and is it, uh, is it the market that's like, I don't know, that's absolute market? Is it a market per year, or what do you think that is? So, that's a total, okay, total market, okay, all right. And then you, you're maybe, this is a too much detail that I'm talking, but I, I will be interested in, so this is a dish, when, once you buy it, is it done? Or do you buy it every once in a while? Or So I want to see, little bit to, I want to see how this develops. I want to see how it develops. Is it about you talking about one per year or two per year, or is it three years in just one play, or what? Is, what kind of numbers we're talking about? Right, right. So I kind of want to see more to that. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Thanks so much. Thank you. Very uh, interesting difference between two teams. Thank you so much, guys. Very interesting. And uh, we see uh, difference between the two teams on different strategies, different targeting at market, addressing market, okay? So the what you guessed, the numbers what you guessed could be uh, verified later on, could be checked, could be tested later on, and uh, also the uh, your strategy, your targeting policy could be also validated later on by asking or by uh, interviewing or by testing in many ways, right? And the knowing the market size is very uh, important, very important. So when you uh, coming up with some idea of doing business, please do it just for fun. It's so fun, right? So you can do it if you have uh, only a couple of minutes in the bathroom or toilet or anywhere, you can do it. So it's gonna be, uh, it uh, can be a back of envelope calculation. So it's, uh, uh, kind of, you know, the, uh, not scales, but the just the uh, familiarity of this kind of mindset. So once you uh, come up with idea, think about market, including size and other factors. So knowing your market, you should know, of course, for getting your idea growth, you should know your market well including size, what we did is sizing, sizing. And other than sizing, you should know market trend, customer profile, and who the other players are in the market, and what is the competition, and what else. Anyways, uh, something, many things. You should know how competition in your market is fierce how market environment is attractive for your business or not, right? And so many people are focusing only on their own resources, such as strengths or weakness, but ignore other players or external environment. So you should care, you should think about external environment and other players, right? Then Competitiveness. In generally speaking, the big market and in higher growth, grossing big market is with uh, steeper, fierce competition. In general speaking, so don't get into hyper competitive market directly. Right, so avoid a war of attrition. Just getting into hyper competitive market is not good for starting up. 
you see the video of uh, Peter Thiel? Peter Thiel? He said, competition is for losers, right? Competition is for losers. So uh, differentiate yourself from others and build unique value proposition, innovative value proposition to customers and avoid competition as much as possible. So that you can change the rule of the game, right? And how many of you guys have led this uh, Blue Ocean Symbiac, Blue Ocean strategy? It's a little bit old one, oh, thank you. Wow, great, great. Uh, this is the terminology of Blue Ocean strategy is not murder. We don't care the terminology. That it's the book is writing about differentiation, differentiation, i.e., making unique value proposition. In in this case, the uh, Southwest Airlines and uh, uh, QB House are described, and this is a example of QB House, and uh, they describe hyper competitive market or co just competitive market is as red ocean, red ocean with ocean with blood. And uh, in Japan, the existing barber sh bar barber's shops market size was so big, but you know the competition among uh, existing players uh, somewhat strong and the size of market is shrinking. But the QB house differentiated, highly differentiated their business from existing players. But doing that, they could avoid competition head to head to each other with uh, existing players. So think about market, think about what other players are doing, think about differentiation. Right, that is necessary for building your unique value proposition, not just new, but unique. Okay. And also marketing. We should mention about the uh, yes four P's. So famous framework, classic fam framework for marketing. I think you guys are familiar with the name of this four P's, right? Four P's is a product, price, place, promotion. It is, the combination of this is called marketing mix. This is originally uh, mentioned, uh, introduced by, developed by uh, Philip Kotola, uh, marketing guru of Kellogg School. And this is a, uh, uh, name from the viewpoint of supplier side, and this could be converted to the cost fees from the customer's viewpoint. Customer solution is a product. Product is for solution to customers. Price is cost for customers. Place is convenience to customers. And promotion is communicating to customers. And this is very classic framework for designing a marketing mix. And because of the long, long history of this, you know, the framework, someone said our oh, 4P is uh, so old, too old. But, you know, it's uh, just a tool, just a tool, as same as business model canvas. It is not merely for planning or designing, not only for, but also for implementation and execution. S and four factors, price, product, price, promotion, are closely related to each other. So once you would change the pricing policy, other three factors could be changed, right? Once you change your channel policy or channel strategy, other three could be changed, okay? 
And uh, as for channel or communication to customers, uh, I wrote some article on Nikkei Monozukuri uh, this month uh, version. Omotenashi Monozukuri. I, I have no idea about Omotenashi Monozukuri, what <laughs> Omotenashi Monozukuri is. Uh, this is an uh, article about the delivering the sh product's value proposition to customers effectively. Then the keyword is consistency in every single touch point. Right? This is a process to be designed for getting some new products or service. Organization, team, design, concept design, product design, touch point design, and experience or solution design. Every single process should be designed in consistently. And also, from the customer's viewpoint, they will touch to the many touch points in here. And in here, we should have consistency, high consistency, right? So consistent messages should be delivered in the same consistent tone and manners. And in consistent experience at the only single touch point makes customers highly disappoint, right? Once disappointed, they will go, okay? That is why we need to share why among all the team members to deliver consistent message by each person by person, okay? Anything cannot be controlled by one CEO. It's not be controlled, but shared why or reasoning can make it possible, okay? Right, so that's it for marketing and growth. Do you have any questions about marketing, okay? Uh, in order to uh, spread our innovative idea and uh, product and uh, service uh, into all over the world. Uh, do we need to do marketing? Uh, I mean, uh, innovative idea uh, spread, I uh, can spread by themselves because uh, it is innovative. How do you think about it? Mm. I think the What, uh, it's very good, great question. And what do you mean when you use marketing in that context? Uh, I think, uh, yeah, advertisement, okay. uh, promotion, okay. and some events. I got gotcha. you, yeah. Advertisement or promotion or events are not marketing. Mm. That's a part of marketing, right? Mm. Building unique, value proposition is a kind of a part of marketing too, mm. right? And delivery in cons delivering consistent message to your teammates mm. and customers are marketing too. Mm. We call it sometimes in internal marketing. So the not the, the advertisement or promotion, not only the advertisement or promotion is marketing. Okay, thank you, I got it. Thank you, great question. The, the other half of the, the question was that it's really interesting. So if your, inno uh, your idea is new and innovative, don't, doesn't it just spread by itself? That was another question you asked, I think I heard, okay? And then, yes, sometimes it does, sometimes it don't, okay? Because Japan, maybe this is out of context, but it seems out, so out of context, but it really clicked me that Japan has most unused patents. Japan, Japan country has the most unused patent, patent than any other country in the world, okay? We are sitting on it. 
but doing nothing for us. So I think we have the best ideas ever. However, it's not doing anything for us. So, you know, so we, we need to think both ways. You, we want to have the good idea, an innovative idea, but it does not fly itself. Sometimes it does. One YouTube, one YouTube hit can spread it around the world. That's possible. However, I think you need to be, you know, clever. You need to be thinking about how you can penetrate your ideas. So, of course, if it's good enough, it will take off. It will take off. But do you remember the, the Small Business Saturday, that video? I'll, I'll show you later today. But I think that was a very clever, it was new idea, but it, it was why it was clever, cleverly spread. So I will show you the video again. That I think that was a good idea, and also it was a, a good spread that was intentionally spread. So I think we you know we need to be thinking: How can you, you know, put this into somebody's mouth, and you know, you know, make a buzz maybe sometimes, or ha get the recognition? So I think this is. This is, it depends on what kind of product you're dealing with or you, what kind of service or what kind of idea you're talking about. But I think this is something you always need to think about. It does not, but I think it does not fly by itself. It needs to get some kind of recognition by maybe winning a award, getting on an event, or I don't know, getting on, showing on the TV, mm. YouTube. It, there are so many ways, but I think you have to have uh, some kind of recognition. Yeah, yeah. right. Great question. Uh, I would like to ask. I would like to ask about uh, consistency in every touch point. Um, I have three questions on it. One uh, is consistency in every touch point matters for B two B business. And second, if it does, what are the customers' disappointment, and how can you prove it that? customer actually disappoint when you don't have consistency in every touch point? Well, it's my own um, personal problems maybe because I tried so hard to convince people above that we need consistency, but they don't think that mm. it's important for B2B. Mm. Okay. You did two questions? Yeah, uh, is, is the consistency in necessary for B2B, for B2B business, yeah. and if Sorry. it's necessary, then how can you prove that there is disappointment mm. I when you have this in inconsistency? Okay, y you said that you have three questions, right? Uh, I, 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 the second and the third, I put it in, in one. Oh, okay, <laughs> okay, all right, I see. Well, it, do you think that it's important for B2B? Yes, I think to so, be but, consistent? but you know, the touch points are mm -hmm. limited. Number of touch points are limited for B2B business mm -hmm. comparing B2C business, right? So the uh, controllability or the, the what you have to do is uh, sorry, com controllability is high higher than B2C business, but consistency is definitely important for B2B business in every touch point, right? Mm? I, I'm sorry, <laughs> sorry, could you please uh, explain again? Controllability, is it? Yeah. Uh, yeah. Uh, yes. You yeah. can control, B2B business has less touch points, mm -hmm. thus you can control those points better okay. than B2C, because B2C you have a, a lot of things you need to consider because mm -hmm. you know, you, you'll be exposed to the cu customers in any ways and mm -hmm. in various ways. Okay. So B2B, there's a, like a meetings or you know, official contract and things like this. The touch points are very limited mm -hmm. so that you can, you can make it control, right? You can control them. That, so that's, that's the one characteristic of B2B and then the touch points and then he thinks it's really important to control that. Yeah. Right. Thank you. And the other one is she wants to convince her people inside. Your boss? Boss is boss is boss, maybe? Yeah. <laughs> How to prove that the customers actually disap in, in B2B business are disappointed? Are they, how, how, how do you put an example of disappointment yeah, for uh, customers in B2B business? Okay, so you, 
you got some disappointment from your uh, customers, right? No? Or you can you maybe say that um, if you lack the, incons the consistency, mm -hmm. you will get um, less result or uh, reliability or issue or you get you do you do worse than if you have a consistency but your boss does not understand that probably mm. Mm. <laughs> great question great question you do you have any e evidence on it like uh, evidence means that you know the lack of inconsistency or the, the customer's voice or, um, or retention well rate or yeah in, in my in my company's um, case mm -hmm. uh, we've been separated into different sections with different products and everybody is seeing different messages mm. all over. Even even though we are the same company. Okay, okay. Yeah, different departments. Different departments, yeah. Wow, that's a uh, uh, big problem, right? Big do, you, uh, do you think we we B two B business need to have the same message for all business sections or for all departments? It depends. It depends, right? It's a very traditional problem, mm -hmm. so called conglomerate problem. Uh, it depends on the shareness of one brand, corporate brand, mm -hmm. and degree of shareness of one brand, right? And uh, it depends on how the each division business is closely related to each other. It depends on the customers are closely related to each other. So it depends, but you know, the okay, yes, it is a very uh, classic problem uh, in mega company mm -hmm. like uh, you know, Mitsubishi Heavy Industries. <laughs> right. So in that case, uh, I don't think it's uh, big enough to deliver certain defined messages to each customer. Right, because you know the for selling uh, power plant mm -hmm. and for selling Viva Aircon, mm -hmm. delivery message should be completely different, right? Mm -hmm. So, uh, but the amount of uh, degree should be shared are mm -hmm. uh, still remain in such a big company's case, but the uh, consistency level is lower, yeah. much, much lower. Sorry, I, I got your question now completely. Okay. Sorry about that. It's, it's uh, le let's give that to okay. the lady. In hub. <laughs> At the top. Okay. <laughs> yeah. uh, any question? Okay. So, uh, uh, according to your previous uh, question, I, under I uh, interpreted a uh, market the definition of marketing as clear the make clear the uh, value proposition and convey this uh, value proposition's message to uh, internal or external. Mm -hmm. So this is so, and I think th so. It's uh, marketing. It's one. Uh, it's including in design, like so, d uh, totally design, and uh, so marketing. It's one. Uh, means or part of this so it's and so if the uh, marketing is to convey messages to peop to people or internal so it's this uh, current uh, concurrent process uh, as planning or producing uh, or yeah of products or service so th this is my question <laughs> so, sorry so uh, not excuse me. Yeah. Can, so can you paraphrase? Oh, okay. Yeah, yes. Etto, sono. Nihongo, please. Etto, kono. Etto, saki no setsume kara, kono marketing っていうのが 
自分たちの商品の売りっていうものを明確にして内部に対したり内部に対してあるいは外部に対してこう伝えるっていうのが、えー、メッセージとして伝えるっていうのがマーケティングの、えー、定義なのかなと思ったんですけどだとしたらこのマーケティングっていうのは、えー、商品について商品なりサービスについて話し合ったり作っていくのと全く同時の作業なのかなっていうのが。疑問で,でそれはその全てをその一番初めから最後までこうデザインする中の一部としてえ他の,そのえ作るとか計画するのと同時の行動として考えられるべきなのかっていうことが気になるその通りですね、はい、その通りです、はい、あのここまでやって作ってアイデア作って形作ってだからここからマーケティングセクション出番ですっていうのは全然違うでこれよくある間違いで。競技のマーケティングで捉えてるっていうことだと思うんですよ。それはもう例えば広告を打つとか、パブリシティを打つとか、なんかイベントやるとか、えー、ソーシャルメディアマーケティングやるとかいうようなことをやるんだとしたら、あるところからバトンを渡してあとマーケティングセクション出番ですみたいな話だと思うんですけど、そうじゃないんですよね。そうじゃないです。マーケティングはもうその前のスタートポイントから始まっているし、インターナルにみんなを巻き込んでいくっていう活動そのものもマーケティングだし、最近でもねマーケターもかなりそういう風な考え方を取る人は増えていると思いますけど、それでもまだやっぱね、これちょっとあの何がロックンロールかみたいな話でもあって全然に人によって言うことは違うんででも本質的に何のためにマーケティングやるのかって言ったらこの素晴らしいアイデアを世の中に広げていきたいっていうためにやるわけじゃないですかって考えたら最初やらなくていいなんてことはあるわけがないんで必ず最初からやるずっとやっていくであの同じ目的同じメッセージをいろんな人たちに伝えていって。ドライブしてスプレーでアウトしていくっていうのがマーケティングだということで考えるとここから先っていうことではないでそうするとこうマーケティングをするとか行う会社って結局ハンズオンで一緒にやらないと意味がないっていうことなのかなと思ったんですけどマーケティングを行う会社、ままあ、そのマーケティングをじゃあお願いしますって言われてそれを広告代理店みたいなものがこう仕事を受けようとしたらそこからえじゃあ商品できたんでこれプロモートしてくださいっていうんじゃ不十分じゃないかっていうことを今これから思ったんですけどはいはいその通りですねそれはね多少あのデザインマネジメントの中にも書いてますけど例えば田子さんがこっからえとこういう企画ができてるからこれを形にしてくれっていうふうにデザインを捉えられるっていうのと同じ問題ですよねこっからマーケティングしてくれって何それってマーケティングしてくれって何そ,れそこでマーケティングって何を言ってるのっていう話だと思うんですよそれはね X 電通街があそこにいるのでちょっと<笑>詳しく聞いてもらうとあれだと思いますけどはいあのはい、決してそのままアウトソースされるというわけではなくて、ねえー、やっぱり一緒にプロジェクトメンバーとして一緒に考えていくと、えー、いうことをしていく中でただまあマーケティングのプロフェッショナルとしてその専門性を融合させながらいいものを作っていくという感じですかね、うんうん、でちょっと重ねて少しずれた話なんですけど、はい、ただこう商品があってそれをまあマーケティングしていくというのはも,うもちろん理想的なものだとは思いつつも既存の製品というのもたくさんあっている中で,そうですえー、と市場が変わっていく中で、じゃあどういうマーケティングを新たにしていくべきなのかっていうのはやっぱり考えていく、そうですね、すみません、日本語ですみません、えー、こと,と、素晴らしいあの試合ですね、はい、あとは、まあ、どうしても大きい会社さんだと役割分担をせざるを得ないので、はい、製品開発部とマーケティング部っていうのが違うっていうのはまあ,あって、その中でどうやって、えー、と商品企画の人の思いを組んでいくだったりとか、多分問調整をしながらそれを作っていくっていうのも、うんうん実際問題としては理想と離れた部分で課題をちゃんと捉えていかなきゃいけないかなとは思って、うんうん、そうですよね、はい、素晴らしいありがとうございます、はい、橋口先生がおっしゃってたあのメルセデスの車の例っていうのはすごく、はい、あのいいんじゃないかないいんじゃないかなというかそのまさにそういう話なんじゃないかなとちょっと思ったんですねそれをシェアしろということですね<笑><笑>今のありがとうございます Let me summarize the, the discussion、okay. just quickly So his question was His question was actually based on the marketing definition that was narrow Okay So marketing is not advertisement or promotion But it was used in that context for years But marketing is like almost almost whole business Or like it starts from concept designing and then trying to reach to your customers and then Keep track of the customers and tra keep make them satisfaction. You know, stay on the on a certain level. That's all marketing. So marketing is like a big, big part of the business. So that's how you interpret the marketing now. But then a lot of marketers are considering the marketing as it is. So that's that's one discussion. And then so therefore, your marketing starts when whenever you start thinking about your product or service. That's where you start. And then you start communicating within your company or within your team. And then you start building up your team and then building up your idea, and you start marketing around yourself. And then you start building the actually like 
uh, developing your product and services, and then you start talking to the people outside of you. So those are all considered to be marketing. So it starts at the very e very beginning. It, I, I don't think it never ends. I mean, it just keeps mm, on going no, never as, as you run your business. So that's the short version of that story. Okay. Thank you. Yep. Yep. So because we are uh, far behind our <laughs> schedule, so if you guys want to uh, know the my, my experience in Mercedes, he mentioned, uh, please ask me in Hub, okay? All right. Oh, before he gets drunk. Okay, <laughs> yes, that's, that's important. Okay. All right, okay, let's take a break. Uh, get back uh, 55 minutes, five minutes before four o'clock, okay? Okay, see you then. <laughs>